Hello, welcome to a demonstration on how to calculate critical value or at least determine the critical value. And um, um, always it's, uh, it's helpful to understand the working definition of the concept. So in this case, uh, in, its, in its simplest terms, a critical value would be uh, the specific point or threshold that is actually used in statistical hypothesis testing. So it helps to determine whether to reject a null hypothesis in favor of an alternative hypothesis, right? So again, for us to be able to use it, we would need to have a T statistic, which is a test statistic as well. All right, so what do you actually need in order for you to perform this particular calculation? Or even if you wanted to look up the value from a table, you need to set the significance level. Uh, is it a 95 confidence level, which is widely used? Is it 99% per, uh, confidence level? Or is it a 90% confidence level? So once you've determined the significance level, then you, uh, you also have to, to know what the sample size is. Because you are going to need to calculate the degrees of freedom, right? And uh, generally speaking, when you're using this particular function, um, your degree of freedom would be the sample size minus 1. Okay, so we're going to factor in in our, in our function so that we'll be able to arrive at the correct critical value. So without further ado, let's move on here and uh, call up the function. So we enter the equal sign. It's called t dot inv and uh, is the 2 t1, the 2, uh, the 2 tail test because that's what we are actually performing here and once you do that you can see that uh, you put some instructions that are actually included there once i've called up the function it says what is the probability so then uh, in this case we are calculating what you call the alpha right so when you say it's 95 confidence level which means the alpha is going to be 0 0.05 and if we're using um a, a 90 percent confidence level then our alpha is going to be 10 right which is 10 percent Right, and if we're using 99 a, a confidence level, then our alpha is going to be 1. Okay, so therefore we say 1 minus, and we can see we have actually determined our significance level up here. We're just using the more default one. There's one that is widely used. Okay, that's what our probability is going to be, comma. Then it says, what about degree of freedom? We know degree of freedom is the sample size minus 1. And then, and then before you know it, the critical value is actually being calculated, right? Now, in this case, when we say upper critical value, it simply means it's, the po it's positive, right? But then, of course, you have to, um, uh, to recreate the same value as a negative. So all we'll do is we just convert that value into negative so that I will be able to, in case we are actually required to test the t-statistic, uh, on the negative side of the bell shape, right? Again, that's actually a demonstration for a total another video for you. All right, so how do we convert the 2.0423 into lower critical value? All we do is we enter the equal sign, minus, and then we click on that value. The alternative would be for us to re-enter this value as a negative, the same value, because it must be exactly the same, but negative. Now, but what does this actually mean? Uh, for example, I could just bring in a bell shape that I extracted from the internet just for demonstration purposes. All right, so um, our critical value is the one that separates uh, the do not reject region, right? Anything, any t-test that will fall into this region here, we do not reject, but anything that falls into the red category right would be uh, we have to reject because we re we refer to this as a rejection region so that's a much more visual way of actually understanding uh, the hypothesis testing when we are using critical value and the t statistic or the test statistic so all we'll be doing will be just comparing we mark our bell shape with the critical value thresholds and then we'll be able to read in the t statistic to see where it falls is it um is it larger than uh, the critical value, then we reject it. If it's smaller than uh, the critical value, then we do not uh, reject.
right? So uh, again, I just want to make sure that at least, I mean, I can paint a little bit of some picture there for clarity purposes. Right, so that's the method of uh, using the t.inv function in Excel. But what about if you didn't know that? You'll still be able to determine the critical value in this particular case. As long as you've got your significance level, you've got to, you know how to calculate a degree of freedom, which means you need to have a sample size information. So what I did was uh, go on the internet and just typed in critical value table. And I was actually able to see uh, a t table here that is actually able to guide me uh, to determine uh, the critical value. So in this particular case, we know that our alpha is 0 0.05, right? Because we're using 95 confidence level. But then of course, it's a two-tail test. So therefore, uh, we actually, um, we, we have to divide that by two. So we should be using this, this line here, right? And uh, so that's actually our column. And uh, then we go all the way down. Our degree of freedom, our degree of freedom is 31 minus 1. Where did I get that from, right? Okay, sample size 31 minus 1 to get the degree of freedom. Then, of course, we're actually able to use that row, which is 30. And you can see where it meets. Uh, our column is actually a 2.042, right? So 2.402. So if we come back here, we say 2.042, right? We can see it's exactly the same value. The only difference is that our calculation was actually to four decimal places. Uh, so if we're going to reduce, if we're going to decrease uh, the decimal, the decimal places, you would find that uh, we would would still end up with that 2.402. So, so you can actually read it out uh, from uh, from the table from the internet or from uh, any table that you may have in a statistics book or is, or a, um, could be uh, a finance book, an accounting book. You are likely to find some tables at the end of the uh, of the book, or you can just go on the internet like I did here. Right, so you see they can calculate it using the t.inv2t or you can look it up uh, from the table. Otherwise, that's all I wanted to demonstrate to you. Right, but again, remember that critical value is very, very important because the threshold that you can then use to determine hypothesis testing. And of course, you also need to have a t statistic. So in other words, the test statistics should be available. That's the one that then you'll be able to test against the critical value to see on which side of the critical value the test statistic falls. And then you can determine whether to reject or not reject. Otherwise, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. And again, as usual, share the video and uh, be sure to subscribe.